Well, everything is fine on uh, this side of the coast. Uh, this Thursday, we're going to see the Santa Fe Trail Amateur Radio Club in the Midwest. We're going to see them on Skype. And then this Friday, Gene at KJI and Randy and Marianne and Drew and the cats, they're going to be opening up KJI Electronics for three days, and I'll join them on Saturday. Not quite live, but I'll be live via Skype. So those of you in New Jersey, New York, I'll see you there. And uh, the Midwest, we'll see you on Thursday. So a full schedule and lots of things happening out here. Now, last week, everybody was picking mercifully on me and my hair. So I want to just tell you how it ended up so badly last week. And then you'll have a better <laughs> understanding as to what we go through to bring you these casts on a bad hair day. Here I am just taking a nice little wave and all is well. And um, the wave is what we call closed out. And when it closes out, it's like a laundry machine. So I've had my hair cut, so get off my case. Uh, that's why <laughs> the bad hair day last week. <clears throat> that was a sizable wave, too. Well, a couple of weeks ago was a stone, stone Mountain, Georgia. Try and say that again. Stone Mountain, Georgia ham fest. And uh, that's Will Jordan and uh, Will representing ICOM America. Uh, we understand their booth was packed the entire time. And Stone Mountain really did a great job of presenting the seminar for those swapping. Look at this. Talk about a great swap haul. They had it made in the shade. But not everybody wanted the shade on such a bright, sunny day out in Stone Mountain, Georgia. So take a look outside. And this was some of the swap meet activity outside. And uh, over to the right-hand side, you can begin to see that big uh, antenna attached to attached to the ICOM mobile. And uh, ICOM was there showing off its emergency management interoperability uh, unit. And there were so many radios, only George could uh, get them on video. <clears throat> but ICOM always does a great job of supporting public service. And I like those hams that also support public service. This ham is ready. They are ready for everything. The gear is slightly older than the ICOM gear, but nonetheless, likely made uh, for uh, talking all around the world. And uh, over at the uh, W5YI and Master Publishing uh, booth, there's Eric, KL7AJ, and Peter, 9SMG. And uh, they're looking awfully happy because it was a great weekend out in the field, and I enjoy that. I sort of came to the field, but again, it was via Skype. And you know, many of us on Ham Nation are happy to Skype into your club meeting. All you got to do is give us about a month warning and beam us up and we'll be there. So meet you on Skype. Well, one thing for sure, there was a big push to get more kids into ham radio. And that's our point for tonight is kids in ham radio. This is nice, a sign that says, come on and see what we're doing. In other words, play a little third party traffic or this one for the kids. I care to say hello on ham radio. <clears throat> what we need to do is to get more kids into ham radio. But are today's technician class exams written at, let's say, this young lady's uh, reading level and uh, understanding level? You have an opportunity when we finish tonight of either sending to the na uh, national NC, VEC, the National Conference of Volunteer Exam Coordinators, uh, questions that you would like to see for technician, or you can send them to me and I will forward them directly to uh, those uh, responsible for fielding questions. But we're looking for Q&As, especially for kids for the technician class license. Now, it doesn't rotate for another two years, but we need more kids. And I think we can rewrite some of the existing great questions and make them kid ready. So be thinking about writing questions to get more of those kids on the air and passing their tests. And again, where you submit the questions is QPC, that's Question Pool Committee Input at sign National Conference of Volunteer Exam Coordinators, abbreviated NCVEC.org. 
Or if you forget all those letters, just send them to me, WB6NOA at ARRL.net, and I will forward them on, all of them. <clears throat> kids are important. And we encourage kids to do more than just get a license, but actually get on the air. And here was at Pacific Con some of the kids' activities putting together code oscillators and having a great time with kits. You know, kids and kits make sense. That's Joe, our Mr. Kit guy, and he is at Night Fire Electronics. That is the group that puts out more kits for kids and adults, Night, N-I-G-H-T, Fire, F-I-R-E, Electronics. Look them up, and they've got kits. <laughs> These kits are approved for kids to have fun putting together a CW oscillator. Or uh, this uh, older uh, kit, uh, yeah, he looks somewhat familiar. Yeah, well, that's Don. Uh, he's, uh, let's see, what are you putting together, Don? He's got, I'm not sure what he's got. He'll explain in just a few minutes. But kits are important. Uh, no, you won't find this at Night Fire Electronics. This is the Gordo kit. And uh, that's Daniel uh, uh, showing off uh, how electrons flow in a uh, semiconductor, being a pickle with a lot of uh, salt on the inside. Ways to attract kids at HamFest. We'll be doing this at Quartz Fest coming up in January, the 22nd to the 29th. Drones. And kids love drones. <coughs> So we're going to have a drone day at Quartz Fest. Also, we're going to be tuning in at Quartz Fest and making contact with the International Space Station. That's an ARRL-sanctioned event just before Quartz Fest gets started with all the Quartzsite Arizona schools coming together for that special uh, day. And we want to remind everybody that the International Space Station, you can contact them via packet and APRS not on VHF, but they've gone to UHF 437.550. 437.550. And that's where they'll be until the new Kenwood uh, D710G that uh, Phil and Bob Reninga are working on today down at uh, the uh, Johnson Space Center. They're working on it and getting it all tuned up to go aloft and uh, be able to get back on uh, the two-meter band. So, uh, Phil Parton and uh, Bob Reninga, thank you for your efforts to uh, get another uh, space uh, radio ready to go aloft. And Don Arnold for tipping me off on that information. And that's Clint, the uh, satellite guy. And uh, he's a lot of fun to learn about working satellites. But, you know, you don't have to necessarily work a satellite to get the kids involved. Uh, just tuning into any one of the many satellites coming uh, up and over. China has so many going overhead now that you're bound to hear them as long as you know the frequencies. AMSAT.org. <clears throat> That's your spot to find the satellites. So get kids involved with ham radio and get them tuned in to satellites. Now, here are two very special kids out of an entire family, about six of them, that are all ham radio operators. That's Faith. She got her license at 10 years, and she's now getting on to CW. That's Grace in the background. She got her license uh, when she was eight years old. And you are going to hear them on the air, says John um, of uh, Last Man Standing. John Amadeo says that on December 6th, when they go on the air from their ham station uh, at the shack there, uh, the kids will be on the air. That's the Leah family, and they're visiting December 6th. They'll be on the air for two hours, uh, dinner time, on uh, many different bands, including, I'm sure, D-Star. So uh, thanks, John Amadeo, for uh, getting our uh, kids on the air and putting them on the air on the set of Last Man Standing. Yeah, they'll be really smiling when they get on that show. And uh, more kids we get on the air by passing the tests. <clears throat> We're good for seeing our ham radio service going. Kids are great because they're about the only ones that for hours can sit here like that and put together beam antennas. If I did that, we'd need a crane to get me back up after falling down on a huge wave. So... 
Kids are important for the growth of ham radio. In fact, there's another kid, a pair of kids. And we understand at the new studio, we're getting things lined up. And hopefully soon we'll hear Leo back on our airways. You can hear him every Saturday and Sunday on AM and FM radio across the country. But uh, thanks, Leo, for giving us this time on your show. And Ray, thanks for being so generous to sponsor all our addicts here. So kids, we are working, and I ask all of you if you have what you feel are better questions and answers that would be more readable for kids, not dumbing down the Q&As, but just rewording them, you can send them to qpcinput at ncvec.org. Or if all those letters and numbers uh, uh, get you mixed up, you can send them to me, wb6noa at arrl.net, and I will forward every single one on to representatives of the question pool committee. So they're looking for more questions. They're also looking for questions on digital. So if you're a DMR or a D-star or a fusion operator and you think uh, we need some technician class questions, get them all written up. Send me an email and I'll tell you where to send them or send them to me and I'll forward them. But we need input from all ham operators to take that license, the technician class license, and make it kid friendly. And everybody that uh, gets a hold of me, I'll make sure that we put you on the instructor's book. And this instructor's book is absolutely free through the W5YI and Master Publishing System. And it's how to teach kids ham radio. Also, Boy Scouts, how to teach technician and the merit radio badge all at once. So, kids, we're on your side. You out there, we sure hope that you'll send in questions to the NCVEC. And I know that they'll consider every new question coming in for technician class. We're still a year and a half away until the questions rotate, but they're getting a head start on it and are looking for your input. 